Hi guys, welcome back to my channel and to today's tutorial where I'm going to be giving you a few tips and techniques of how I have drawn this bear, this gorgeous looking bear in coloured pencils. This is actually a really long tutorial, it's over five hours in full length in real time. This is just a short condensed version of this tutorial but if you want to watch the full thing in real time then you can always head on over to my Patreon or to my website where you can get access to this plus a whole load of other tutorials plus there's also going to be a sneaky giveaway specifically for website subscribers and for patrons as well I'm going to be giving away a 120 set of polychromos so if you're a subscriber for the month of January that's going to be something that you want to be into head on over there all subscribers and everything on patreon and my website get automatic entries so yeah there's that if you want it as well. Let's get into this bear for you guys. So I started with the eyes as I usually do with all of my animal portraits because that for me is the soul of the animal. I like to get those in so I can kind of work on the rest and work on the character. I'm not gonna go into detail about how I've done the eyes because I have colored eyes in depth on this channel before. So I'm gonna link a video in the description below, uh, a few videos actually of different eyes so you can use those same techniques and apply it to this bear here. The main thing I really want to talk to you about is the brown fur and the kind of layering process and the structure that I've gone with for creating this kind of tone. People always ask me about base layers and what kind of colours I put down as base layers. So I'm going to explain a little bit with this particular brown fur here. So brown fur is really obvious to tell that it is a warm toned fur and when you have something warm toned I tend to put a warm light tone as a base layer. In the case of the brown here I've taken the darkest brown pencil which for me was a walnut brown and then I've kind of looked at my pencil swatches that I created and I have found the lightest kind of tone that is like a variation of brown. And for me, that was ivory. That's a really, really light tone. It's, it's not grey, so it's not going to kind of dull the colours or desaturate them in any way. Using an ivory base is just going to really help accentuate the warm tones within brown. So that's what I tend to do when I'm picking base tones. And for this brown, I just went with the ivory. I've also paired this with some of the cinnamon. Because when I pair cinnamon and ivory together, when I layer them really lightly on top of one another, so put down some ivory, then cinnamon, and then ivory again, it creates a really subtle apricot tone because you're putting yellow and pink together, which creates a kind of orange variation, like a peach. So creating that really nice kind of peachy base tone for this is really essential for the brown fur. It's going to really help to make it look really nice and rich and also by layering those two colours together and layering them multiple times I'm putting down some colours onto the paper which is going to create um, a, a smooth area for me to work the details over but I'm also building that kind of depth of fur by continually layering, layering those ones as the base. Now I know I'm just working on the nose and the kind of mouth area but again I have covered this before on my channel so I'm going to link a video in the description for creating a really detailed realistic looking nose. It's the same sort of techniques and everything. This bare nose is a lot smoother but the techniques are similar so I'm going to link that in the description below so I don't have to repeat that process once more. Back to the brown fur. So I've explained the kind of layering process of how I have selected the base colour of the ivory for the brown. So then the mid-tones, again, to, to kind of pick those, I have taken my darkest brown, which is that walnut brown, and then I've just looked at my colour swatches again, and I found the kind of traced back a trail of colours back towards the ivory. So I've started with the darkest, then I've selected the next darkest, which could be something like a burnt umber and then looking at various tones on the reference photo as well if there are any orange tones what colors I can see in the highlight areas all of that kind of thing so brown fur does hold a lot of orange which is why I layered the ivory and the cinnamon together to create a, an apricot tone you could also use an apricot kind of color from a Pablo range or the Caran d'Ache Luminance actually has a fantastic apricot but if you don't want to spend a bunch on different colored pencils and like to mix your own I find it really therapeutic to just find like different color combinations with just one set like the polychromos here then just have a little bit of fun layering some different colors together like the ivory and the cinnamon. 
Um, but I look to see if there's kind of any orange tones or yellow tones. Brown fur has a lot of orange and yellow tones, so I'm just kind of selected the colours that I think would work best. Usually I select like a burnt ochre, a terracotta, those kind of natural toned oranges. But every now and then I'll pull out like a, a kind of unnatural bright orange, like orange glaze, because I find that one's really nice to go over and really accentuate some of the brown tones, especially if there's uh, a bit of sunlight hitting brown fur and the patch of fur looks really kind of luminous, then I would add in like that kind of unnatural orange to kind of accent that. So that's how I select the colours just working from the darkest colour and then just finding some tones that work with that and then that work also work together. You can see that I've added in some purple as well and the reason for this, as I've explained multiple times before um, and also in a lot of the real time tutorials I always bang on about this, but if you're using a colour that is kind of complementary or opposite on the colour wheel, it accentuates it a whole lot more. Or not necessarily just completely opposite, but one of the kind of uh, a triad of colours, they really complement one another. So I've used purple with my orange and adding purple and orange together, well the purple just really makes the orange tones pop out. So I've added in purple into the shadows because then that's going to really help make the lighter areas appear more orange and appear a lot more vibrant. So I've added a lot of purple, purple violet and some Caput Morton violet, those kinds of tones into the shadows or the darker areas of the fur. And then the lighter areas of the fur, I've added in some Naples yellow, um, some burnt ochre, and I've just kind of tried to hype up those yellow tones even more. But the purple's doing a really good job in the shadows of doing that itself. So that's why I add in purples. And also into the bridge of the nose area, I'm sure you'll see as I move around once I've moved my hand off this area, that, you, that I've added in uh, a lot of blues. And I tend to add in a lot of kind of sky blue tones, those really light blue tones where I do see a little bit of highlight regardless of the colour of fur that I'm working on because I just find that blue works really well, especially a light blue, not a dark blue, but a, a light blue tone works really well in highlighted areas. It makes them appear a lot more brighter and lighter rather than just going in with like a white tone. I'm using blue here to create a white tone. You can see that it does have a really nice effect. You can see on the bridge of the nose that his nose is really capturing, capturing that light, which is absolutely perfect. That's exactly what I wanted to do there. So adding in those light blue tones into the highlighted areas is an absolute must. It doesn't really tie too well in with like the colours of brown fur, so you wouldn't immediately think to pick it out when you're picking for brown fur if you're tracing back that root from the walnut brown all the way back but if you're just looking at some colors that you can see within a highlight area you'd often see blue and I've also mixed a bit of purple in there just to tie in the purple from the shadows and all of that so let's talk about the fur texture this bit that I'm working on at the moment was the hardest part of the portrait like this kind of texture this he had like a really wet shaggy looking neck and it was really difficult to replicate. It's really kind of difficult to get, myself especially, to get my head around this kind of texture and what I need to do to create it. So the first thing that I've done is put down a little bit of a base layer so that we've got something to work on. So I've actually gone in with a mixture of ivory and warm grey one on this particular part. And then what I've done is mapped out all of the darkest areas, so the shadows, this fur wasn't curly, but it wasn't straight. It was like these really weird waves. So I just kind of mapped in the darkest areas using my darker color, which was a walnut brown. And then I have, once all of those are in, they kind of look as though they kind of make sense. Like you can kind of see or trace where each kind of little tendril, each little clump of fur is going. Then I will go in and start to add my mid-tones and then building up the colour or in between, so those areas that I've kind of left free. So I've kind of used a negative space method, just adding in the shadows, and that's how I've kind of combated this. We'll come back to uh, talking a bit more about this when I continue the lower section um, again. For the ear here, the texture was very different to the neck. It's kind of got this really fuzzy fluffy texture so for this I put down my base layers, built up the mid-tones, added in my shadows as well to make sure they were really nice and dark and I've just used some really short 
uh, kind of stubby fur strokes and I've also mixed that with some kind of long tapered ones so I've mixed uh, the longer fur strokes and the shorter fur strokes together to kind of create this fuzzy look and I've also used a scalpel I've used my slice craft blade to add in little textures of white hairs which are overlapping uh, which gives a really really nice effect you can really see how good the ears look you kind of got really dark areas so I made sure I went into my dark areas with a hard pressure on some walnut brown and then with my scalpel I have scraped away some different hairs making sure I go in different directions so it really looks like it's overlapping and you can see the depth within the ear it was really easy to do this as well because I had put down a lot of darker colours. It's a lot easier to scrape away and reveal those whiter lines over those darker colours than it is to reveal those lines over lighter colours. So I was really happy with the outcome of that. So if you are wanting to create white hairs over something, especially if it's something dark, you can either use an embossing tool or you can go ahead and use a craft blade like I did with this guy. I think the craft blade gives a really really nice look it does make it look a little bit more natural because you can't see like the indent of the paper so you can kind of go back in once you've scraped a little bit as well a lot easier than you can with uh, an embossing tool or something to create lines and you can go back in and kind of shade them a little bit a lot easier now we're back to that difficult neck fur and you can see with the little drips coming from the chin that I've used the negative space method once again so I've gone around and added in all of the darker areas to define the kind of shapes and everything around there and then added in a little bit of the colour within there and then you can see what I'm doing now is just adding in this really really dark colour around them to make them a lot more defined so you can see by adding in the darker areas it kind of makes those her drips look a lot lighter. I've just gone in and shaded a little bit more of them as well. I must admit with this particular fur around the neck, I did put it off for the longest time. I really shouldn't have put it off for as long as I did. Uh, it was one of the last things I ended up doing. So I've kind of like jumped back and forth between this portrait, which really wasn't a good idea. I was just really struggling with this texture. Um, it, usually textures like this I find difficult and I kind of put off but this one in particular I don't know why but I was just kind of like nope I'm not doing this one um, it was just a little bit more I think because it was wet as well and I wanted to portray the wet drips um, sufficiently it was just a little daunting but you can see here what I'm doing I've put down a base layer I've used the dark walnut brown to map out all of the lighter areas so those kind of really wet locks coming in and then I'll go back in a minute as well and start to define some of those mid-tones so you can see I've added in some burnt ochre and then just going in and shading a little bit more with some of those darker colours as well just to kind of blend them in the, the areas that I did define they do end up being quite dark but I just needed to go in and define them because they are kind of significant for the wet look and I just wanted to make sure that I didn't kind of work over them and not include them. For this particular area I didn't 100% follow the reference photo either because I find that with these particular textures for me myself if I follow the reference photo 100% then it ends up looking a bit too contrived and a little bit too controlled and doesn't look natural in the slightest so I just kind of make sure that I get the key features of the reference photo in but then anything else I just kind of make up as I go along and just make sure that it look that it looks like really nice and natural and everything. So that's pretty much it for this short version of the tutorial. As I said, if you want to follow along in real time, then you can hop on over to Patreon on my website to follow the full thing in real time. As I said, it's an over five hour tutorial. It's got lots of real time tuition, all of that color theory that I explained. I talk through it in real time. Uh, so step by step, holding your hand, telling you what colors and everything as you go. And as I said, there is going to be a special giveaway for all of my subscribers over on Patreon and my website where I'm giving away a set of 120 polychromos. So if you want to be in a chance to win that, then make sure that you are a subscriber for the month of January and then you will be entered automatically into that. Um, but thank you so much for watching. Make sure you stick around on my channel for the tutorials that I'm going to be putting out this year. I'm going to be a lot more consistent with putting videos out for you guys. Uh, but anyway, thank you guys so much for watching and I'll catch you soon. Bye.